get something All right, to write. so we're calling this dwelling in his kingdom. Can you say amen? All right, our overhead scriptures, let's go right to them. We'll be in Matthew 7, look at verse 21 to 23. Now, we're going to be talking basically about a kingdom that is unshakable. How to dwell as a Christian that's not moved, not affected so easily. Can you say amen? Now, Jesus is tell, I'm talking to his disciples, and there are other people present. These are the religious Pharisees of the day. So Jesus said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Notice, enter into. Folks, how many know that the kingdom of heaven came at Pentecost? That was almost 2,000 years ago. Over 2,000 years ago. So the kingdom of heaven is invisible. It's right there in our presence. We're in his presence. Can you say amen? But back then, the kingdom had not come like that. Jesus was representing the kingdom. So he says to them, listen, shall enter the kingdom. So there'll be a lot of people that talk about God who won't be able to enter in the supernatural kingdom and its benefits. They're locked out. Everyone take note of that. There are people that will profess they know God, but only God knows for sure. We're not to judge them. And they'll say, Lord, we've done this, we've done that, we've done all that, but they shall not enter the kingdom. So this tells us, because you guys know a lot, that this must be the natural man, the fallen man trying to be religious. You got it. All right, so let's move on. Verse 22 says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonderful things in your name? But when I will declare to them, now this is a key. I have to cut all the goofball teachings on this. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. See, that's the thing. These people never got Jesus. They never accepted God by faith. They used God as a crutch or to control people. Did you know back, way back then, religion was the thing? You either were a God-fearing religious person and you believed in faith, God blessed you, or you were a religious person believing in anything because it's in man's heart to be a believer. And, of course, the enemy loves that and he draws them away into other religions. But there was only two camps. Those that believed in God believed not in God. So those that thought God was a... Now, have you ever met somebody like... I have to explain. Have you ever met somebody that carries a talisman or a cross, and they really don't have Jesus, but they think something special with that? And it, it probably is. But you know it's not going to do anything. What's going to do something is really having Jesus in your heart. Now, years ago before I was saved, you can laugh at me, I used to carry Jesus around in my wallet. You know, picture of Jesus just for good luck. And then I had a little rabbit split on my... You see, you, you, this is superstitious is what I'm saying. And people naturally want to believe in something. And that's why the church of Jesus Christ, you and I need to be bright we need to be solid, unmoved, stable, so people can see that God works. It isn't religion. It's not you got religion. Wow, you got religion now. No, I got Jesus. Let me tell you about what he's doing in my, my life. You're not telling them you're perfect. You're not telling them you're better than they are. You're telling them there's hope. There's a door out of here. Everyone's in jail whether they know it or not, except for you and I. We have the jail open through Christ. That's why we maintain a walk with him, so we're free from guilt and free from stress, feeling inadequate, because we go to him on a daily basis, and we get that resetting. Remember, God keeps all your good. He's listing it. 
He keeps all your words too. But if you go to him every day again, what a wonderful thing to know. Lord, I come to you this morning, just like I did last morning and the morning before that, the morning before that. And I ask you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Forgive me of all things that might uh, uh, offended you. And Lord, restart my day. Now, everything that was good that you did yesterday will be kept for today and will be all the other wonderful things too. So guess who's keeping good record on you? Your Savior. You belong to him. So don't run around telling everybody how good you are and what you've done. I found that that really doesn't go anywhere. You know how many people I have preached alongside of? It doesn't matter. You go, who? You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter who we've been with. It matters who we walk with and follow. Can you say amen? All right, let's go to our next scripture. Again, we're talking about those that just talk God and those that walk God. Luke 6, verse 46. But why do you call me Lord, Lord? And you don't do the things that I say. Pretty good, everyone. How many times have you said to your child, didn't I tell you to clean your room? Moving right along. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings, you have to hear the word, and does them. Hear and does. Hear and does. Wow, that's pretty easy. Here's God, you want me to do this? Yep, do it. Hears and does, I will show you to whom he is like. Now, this is Jesus talking. He is like a man building a life, his house. He is in total future, who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. Who's the rock? Amen. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently. Listen, a brother and I were talking this morning. You know, the enemy doesn't like us. And if you have any influence at all, he wants to pick on you. So you should be doing what the Bible says. Count it all joy when different things challenge you. This is an opportunity for God to rise up in you and make you an overcomer. Someone say amen. amen. Not look at the challenge, but look at the God who overcomes. It's like a man building his life who dug deep, laid the foundation on the rock, and when the flood arose, stream beat down the valley of the shadow of death, beats against the house. There's squirrels. <laughs> it could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. What did we start our life, our new life in Christ on? Jesus Christ. And you know, there are some ones, and listen to me, it's a tragical thing. That's a new word. It's a trage tragedy that people will start with Christ and then they'll wander off thinking they got it now. We don't want to do that because we only operate on what we have experienced and know for either what we've learned or our past. But God knows our future. And we follow Jesus. You know that tomorrow we'll have victory in it too. So I always used to get frustrated when people say, I'm going to get my victory. I'm going to get my victory. And that's legitimate and that's right. But it sounds to me like something's missing. I'm going to get my victory. Wait a minute. Didn't Jesus say it's finished? Didn't Jesus already get our victory? Don't we have Jesus in our heart? So therefore, we already have our victory no matter what the challenges of life are. Can someone say amen? Amen. So therefore, we need to refocus. Sometimes we just need to refocus and realize that God's got this because we put it in his hands. Now, you wouldn't have it if you didn't put, your, put it in his hands. And here's another thing. Please stay with the crowd. Don't wander off on your own. Sheep are no good off by themselves. People really aren't either. So we need each other. We're family. Listen, don't set factions. Don't be the group over here and we'll be the group over there. Don't be the older people here and the younger people over here. Stop all that nonsense. Ladies, you should be all gathering together. So you're all ladies on the same page, got the same thing going. 
Don't sit over here and go over there. Don't separate yourself from the rest of the body because there is where the wolf comes in. And he seeks to eat sheep because they're not very smart. Remember, the devil's been at this for thousands of years, destroying lives and coming again things that are of God's. Don't think you got this. No, you go to God who's got this. Stay in the tank, Hank. Can you say amen? Stay in that warm cabin while the storms of life are going around and you only leave when God tells you to and then you get in the tank and you drive around. What do you mean? I walk in Jesus. Colossians, let me remind us. Colossians says we're hidden in Christ, hidden from the devil. Long as you stay in Christ, ask God to help you to maintain, to dwell in, to abide in Christ, then God's, we're hidden in God. My word, that's, that's total immersion in God, isn't it? The only time we get out is when we do something. So we want to not just do things. We want to pray about what we do. The Bible tells us we can maintain peace and a calm mind when we pray about things before we do them. Your pipe breaks in your house, God forbid, and before you call anybody, take a moment out and pray. God, I need this fixed, but I don't have a lot of funds, whatever. But we don't. We leap into action. And, you know, legitimately, yes, I understand all that because I'm a leaper too. I don't leap so well anymore. <laughs> you don't leap into action now. You're in the enemy's territory. As long as you're in this planet, you're still not of the planet. Remember, you're in the world but not of the world. So you're like behind enemy's lines. So you can't have loose lips. That will sink your ship. You've got to get your mouth and your thinking lined up and be trained by the Holy Spirit. So I'm ready to really pour out some things. So it goes on. And this foundation cannot be shaken, okay? And we know what happens to the other people that build their house on the earth, the ways of the world. It shakes all the time. How many people and friends do you have? Relatives, maybe. They're the good people but their life is so broken up because they're trusting in everything else but the Lord. And they got to, if you really sit down and can interview them, you'll find out they got a bad concept about God. That's why they haven't thrown themselves totally into the Lord. Because once they knew how beautiful Jesus was and you can represent him that way, they'll want him whether they tell you or not. Are you ready? Let's get into this together. So I want to say blessings to you. Today, we're going to see that God has sent his kingdom at Pentecost. The power of God's kingdom and authority came at Pentecost. And then the Holy Spirit came with it. Why? To teach, train, and guide us into all truth. Can someone say amen? This takes a spiritual man to want this to happen, not a carnal man. How, what's the difference? A carnal man thinks of only themselves, their habits, what they want to do and when they want to do them. A spiritual man thinks about the Lord, may not be perfect, but thinks that their heart is towards the Lord. That's the difference. One's heart's towards the earth. The other one's heart is towards the Lord. How did you get saved? Somebody turned you, made you think about it, and you turned your heart towards heaven. Accepted Jesus, amen? You accepted Jesus. But the natural man, the, just the natural person, is locked out of the kingdom of heaven, locked out of spiritual things. But it says in 1 Corinthians 2, he cannot understand them. They're spiritually weird. So when you start talking to Jesus in a religious manner, people are turning you off. It sounds weird. But you start talking about what God has done in your heart, their ears will open up. Hello, there's a little nugget there for you. I want to take you a little further. Remember, even greater than the fact that the natural man is locked out because Jesus says you can't cast your pearls before the swine, the devil's locked out. 
And Christians need to know, oh, send this around, that Satan can't go in the spirit. He can't go into your prayer closet. He can't follow you in. He only listens to your conversations. How does he know to do that, Pastor Kerry? Well, when I go in and I pray and I come out, I'm a lit light bulb. I'm so lit up, he's nowhere around. But he has listening, his listening devices. And he monitors why, because I'm so bright. Now, if I wasn't bright, I think my wife sometimes wonder how bright I am. But if I wasn't bright, you see, then, then it would be no problem. But because I am very bright, that's too bright for him. He needs to dim it. Dim it down. Don't be so Jesus. Dim it down a little. You know, so the worst thing when people tell you to dim it down, the being bright and being in tune with God is the very thing they need most from you. But they always give you what their comfortability is. Well, I'd like to go to church maybe one day when, when the time is right and hell freezes over. Hello? <laughs> you got to laugh at this. You did this too, probably. Played that old game, thinking the difference between knowing Jesus and religion. I did. All right, let's go on. The kingdom is fully in operation since Pentecost. But the only access that that we have is through Christ. So if you need something to operate, our prayers, even our prayers, God hears your prayers, even in your mind. But he honors them with fierce protection when you use the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come. Whoosh. Now, now you've deaf and dumb the enemy. He isn't going to hear a thing you said. You were just moved into the spirit. I, mean, I wasn't in the spirit before. Probably not. And it's okay. Just move right in. Father, in Jesus' name. Bow. And remember, you don't do that. You just utter the covenant words. And God has promised to do that for you. To move you out of the natural into the spiritual. He does it. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bam, bam, boom, you're there. You might not feel any differently, but if you continue to worship and love God, you'll change. You'll start sensing God and the presence of God. Proceed on. A lot of times when we go to God, and, and I have to, I'm going to expound a little bit before we get on. A lot of times when we go to God, we go just enough to get everything we need and everything fixed and lined up and get a good blessing. And met, I met, I'm not putting that down. That's I want you to do that. But for some of you, you can proceed on from there and continue to give God more time. In that time is where all the changes happen quicker because why? You have put yourself down in your schedule and you placed yourself in God's presence a little longer just for a lot, little bit more change. Can you say amen? Now, see, I grow a little teeny garden on my deck, and I know that if it, the soil can be deprived of, of all its nutrients. And so what do I do? Linda, what do I do? I add fertilizer. Amen. And so listen. Jesus is your fertilizer, the word of God, your praise and worship. Amen. This is what we feed on to cause us to be healthy. And then your private prayer time. Now, please don't put it in all that priority. Your private time with God is the very most important time. That's the time that the enemy seems to reduce and you don't spend so much time. It's good to be with God's people and to be encouraged by one another and say amen. But it's even better to be with God and develop that I need you God relationship first thing every day. Say amen. All right. Let's get into our lesson. Oh, thank you. Okay. Today we're going to cover these four areas. Let's have fun with them. Number one, God honors his word above his name. Did you know that? God honors his word above his name. If I give you my word, my word should be 
worth more than me myself because if I don't keep my word, then my worth isn't much. Do you get it? Point two, we are in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Remain there. Don't get out of there. My, my daughter shared with me about this place that is like, Walls are thick, but she's got this beautiful glass, and she's watching the world and all its problems, and she's comfortable in the kingdom of God. And you see what I, I thought? That's great, because I've always imagined a tree house up from the earth and in the trees, but the tree is not really a tree, some kind of structure. And I'm watching people go below me and looking up to God, and I mean, I have that dream reoccurring. And you say, well, what's the benefit for that? Safety, secureness, being shielded. I abide under the shadow of the Most High. We need to start getting our mind on things like that because that's who you really are. You're a spiritual person and a physical person. Which one's winning? All right. Thirdly, don't let your walk slip away. Don't you let your fresh walk with Jesus slip away. Can Christians let things slip away? We know that. And fourthly, the doer of the word. What are the benefits to those that just do the word? That's all it is. Simple. Yes, Dad, I'm going to do the word. I'm going to be about my father's business. Lord, say the word and I'll do it. Lord, even at your word, nevertheless, I'll do it. Jesus said, I come not to do my own will, but the will or word of my Father. I'm not to do my own thing, but that which I see my Father do, that do I. In other words, I want to have spiritual mind enough enough to let God lead the day and show me the wisdom in everything that I do and ask. So we interact together in a partnership and we can get out of here. Can you say amen? And we can get our family blessed. Why? Because we're faithful children, faithful children of God. God remembers and reminds us that he will save us and our household. You just hang with it. Keep your kids in God's hands. All right, let's get into it. First one, God honors his word above his name. Psalms 138, verse 2. This is a quote from it. Says, I will worship. Now, this is Old Testament. So King David says, I will worship towards your holy temple. That's where the, they focused on God. It was kind of like a place where God dwelt. Focus on God. See, that's Old Testament. You and I have God in us. He dwells in heaven. We dwell in heaven with him. We walk with him. Can you say amen? So I will worship towards your holy presence or our temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth, for you have magnified, see that means amplified, your word above your what? Now, if the Bible says there's no other name in heaven given among men where we be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ, you'll find that in Acts. He says, I will honor my word above my name. And we just got through reading how important it was to hear the word and do the word. So if we hear the word and do the word, then it will be God in us doing the word and we'll be like God in the earth, full of authority, full of power. Why? Because God is leading us. God is shielding us. We're in a tank, not in ourselves anymore. I get excited about that stuff. John 1, listen to this. John 1, 1 through 4, you know this. This is how important doing the word is because the word is God. So even though it's his word, he honors his word even above who God's character name is. He will keep his word to you. In the beginning was the word. There were three in heaven, Father, the word, and the Holy Spirit. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word hasn't changed. He's just become flesh, rose again, sits at the right hand. Now he's the only begotten of the Father. All things were made 
through him. I can't even come to the Father except through him. We can't do any works that are going to be registered of any good if we don't do it through him. And we're shielded when we do it through him. So if you're going to do your business, do it through him. If you're going to be a, a, a baseball player, do it through him. And he gets the glory. Can you say amen? You get the idea. All things are made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Everyone say life. Now look at this next phrase. And the life was the what? In God's nature, in your heart, produces light. Let me explain. It's like a light bulb to a projector. God's in there projecting himself. Say amen. And when we focus in on him and loving him, we're able to allow him to focus out and project out. And people see by our words and by our actions that you are really becoming like Jesus. We'll have to buy you a robe and sandals. No, you understand? You're soft and loving when before you were harsh and you're bitter. You see, all those things are changing. Why? Because God is coming out from the inside. He's coming out and shining out. And he's washing your soul and your pains and your frustrations away. You just keep getting into his presence. Satan can't stand the light. And he certainly can't stand Jesus because he whooped him. Stripped him. Made an open, embarrassing show of him. And we'll, listen, and we'll do it again every time you speak the name of Jesus or you act on the word of God. Did you get that? Because if I hear what God wants me to do, listen, and I practice what God wants me to do just to do it, I will become what God is doing. It's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. Silver and gold I don't have, but such as I have, Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Give Jesus out. Get used to giving Jesus out. Even in your conversation, even when you don't mention his name, you can bring his presence out in the very words you say because you can change the tones and, and the alterations. Did you know God created everything by sound and light? And God can do that if he wants. You ask him, why did he do that? Before light was, God said, sound. Listen, so guess what? There's a kingdom. Listen, I'm going to share something with you. You might like this little nugget. There's a kingdom set up all around you and in God in you that formulates on the light and the sound that you produce. Do you have a merry heart? It makes good like a medicine. Are you droning? Oh, you don't know what I mean. I didn't know that. Now you're gonging. I call it the gong show. There's a, you run on a certain hertz. I, I don't know. It's 100, 110. I don't know what it is. Somebody will correct me. And that you're made to where life is going. Things are exciting and happy. You know, you're doing things, you're not complaining, you're not talking about negative things because that brings us down. You've heard that term? Well, literally, changes the sound that you emanate. You're supposed to ring in love. You're supposed to ring in joy. You're supposed to ring with peace and wonderful things of the Spirit. Right? So what does Satan do? He bashes us, waxes us around, and we can't even carry that unless we spend some time with Jesus and he begins to fix what has been broken. Say amen. amen. Say, make me an instrument, a sweet shining instrument. Fill my heart with you, Lord. Lord, make us a symphony, a beautiful symphony let me bring praise my heart to you lord you see we're made to ring true like that and so don't lose the simplicity of the gospel the idea of the enemy is to keep you from your from god's best in your life and if we will constantly have nothing if we don't make an effort to ring true, keep ourselves with God, and let him keep us in a condition 
where we can be healthy and whole. Can you say amen? It's new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord. You're new every morning. He's new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. He never forgets you. Meet with them. Talk with them. One time God had me tell somebody. He says, and I mentioned their name, you know, and if I ever said this to you, I'm not referring to you. I said, so-and-so, what? God hasn't seen you in a while. He would like to see your bright and shiny face. How about going to him in prayer? Now, there's one thing to just pray. Another thing, when you sit down with somebody face to face, that's what I'm talking about. I know you guys are here, and I'm talking to you now. Well, when I sit down, you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You know what I mean. All right. All right, let's go on. So all things were made through him. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. A couple of points. Number one, church, in the beginning, there was God. He was three in one. Now listen to my description, please, because some people teach the Trinity, the Godhead wrong, and they all kinds of crazy stuff out there. I'm just going to give you a simple way of understanding, okay? There are three original creators, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. They're never doing anything without the other. They're all three, one, one and one. The Father is above all. Jesus is at his right hand. And the Holy Spirit encompasses all. We know Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And we come to the Father through Jesus. And we sit before the Father. So there's three original, okay? Now, there are people who are teaching, oh, there's many gods. A whole bunch of gods got together, decided to make man in a test tube. Ancient aliens, you know, all that. Listen, the ones that came down on the earth that they call aliens were fallen beings that corrupted the earth with Lucifer. We'll get to that at lunch. But the three original, Father, the Word, or the begotten Son now, because he was born in the earth for mankind, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. Can you say amen? Now, here's the exciting thing. All the other creations came from God's original perfection. There was no darkness. There was no death. There was no devil. There was only all God. And you say, well, is there an example in the Bible about this? I'm glad you asked. Moses, when he was looking at the burning bush, was seeing the entire complete God. Every branch was part of God. Hello. It was so glorious he had to turn. Remember, this is holy ground. Take off your shoes. You know. So here's what I'm saying to you. One day, one of the branches with his followers that he convinced to follow him, not God, broke away. His name was Lucifer. He became the devil, the most evil creature that ever could exist. He exists to take you and keep you away from God. He stole Adam and Eve away and made us or talked Adam and Eve to eat of this fruit. Now, I'm going to say something to you. didn't want to say this, but if you all study mankind's DNA... And look at it, sort of as, let everybody do that look and come up. There's a lot of junk DNA in our DNA. Animal DNA is in there. All kinds of crazy things. If you saw it and lined out how it is, you'll say, well, how did I, all that junk get in that DNA? Everything that God makes is perfect, isn't it? Come on, say amen, somebody. So how'd that junk get in there? You know, and years ago, I went to God about this. Where did that junk come from? He said, didn't I tell Adam not to eat of the fruit? Satan put his DNA in that fruit. And so when they ingested that fruit, they got the devil's DNA in them. It shut them down spiritually, and later, 900 years or so, they died. But they were, we were never meant to die. So a second branch, listen, a second branch broke away from God. 
That's why Jesus talks about us being grafted back into the vine. To abide in the house of God. Why? Because God really didn't ever want to lose us. So there's always been a plan for you and I throughout eternity before the creation of the heavens and earth to be before God in love. But we were stolen from. Now our job is to obey our Lord and Savior, surrender on a daily basis, meet with him so our plate is cleaned, and follow him out of here because our life really begins when we leave this planet. So we're only here for a time. That's why we sing songs. This world is not my home. I'm just, and that's why some of these old hymns, oh, Lord, I want to be out of here. I want to go. Why? Because this is really not our home. I believe God left us here to share our relationship with God to others who don't have a relationship and to do it without being religious or preaching at them but just showing them the love of God in your heart. Say amen. amen. All right, let's go on. Two, the Father and the Word and the Holy Spirit, these three are the original. Everything is created after. Now, here's one more thing. One more thing. Everything that God created except for mankind, you got to listen to me carefully, we're all created to be servants to God. The angels are servants to God. Everything. You look at them. They're all servants. None of them were created to be a son of God. Hello. Look up and say amen. Now they're called sons of God as a compliment because they came from God. Ben, he, Elohim. Fallen ones. Okay. We're talking about Lucifer and his punch. But we are the only original Creation after God's likeness and God's image. Can you say amen? And we are created, just to make a long story short, thank God. We were created to walk with God on his level. We weren't created to be slaves nor to serve him. We were created to be his companion. Someone say, oh me, oh you were made to fellowship and be with God, his companion. And look, we have Jesus now. We are that, that right now. So be his companion, will you? Stop living your own life so much. That's the part that fails. Be the Lord's companion. And he gave us and left us the book of Solomon. Come away with me, my love. Let us sit down and reason together, church. He calls us the bride of Christ or part of the bride of Christ. Fall in love with him. Right? And it takes a while. Love, you see, I married Linda. I was lo I'm in love with her. But I'm in more in love with her now than I was when we first started. Now, I know that's unfair for some of you. You're single. But you understand the terminology. Don't just date Jesus when you're in trouble. You know, get in there, open your heart, listen to them. I mean, I know people, maybe you're one, I hope not. You go to God and then you unload everything to God. You tell them everything that's going on in your life. And that's all he hears from you. Every day you go to him and you unload. Now listen, this is kind of humorous. God's waiting for you to believe. Not to unload. He already knows what's wrong. He needs you to believe and ask him to get involved and make it right. Say amen. So I'm talking about me. There was a time I was married, had, had three kids, lost one. I had working full time, pastoring full time, whatever that meant. I was, you know, busy. I barely could get rest. The babies would cry, you know. My children, by the way, you're wonderful. But I went to God, and I'm telling God, oh, Lord, I got the, and I got to have this, Lord, and I got to have that. And then right in the middle, I was about a half an hour in, Peggy, and God says, Carrie, have you ever had God interrupt your prayer? Maybe you're headed the wrong way. 
and he said this, and I said it back to him. He says, Carrie, and I said, Lord, I'm praying. Can you see how humorous that is? Who am I praying to? And, the, and then he says, God always locates his kids. He'll ask you a question. What are you doing? And he said to me, what are you doing? I says, I'm praying, Lord. He says, no, you're not. I says, yes, I am. He says, no, you're not. You're complaining. I don't need you to complain or tell me what's wrong. I'm not deaf. I need you to believe my word and speak my word and believe for miracles. Can you say amen? Don't beg God. Love him. Remember, you're a little kid. That little kid crawls up on your lap, kisses your cheek. How can you turn that down, Linda? You can't. That's okay. It's cool. Sorry. You got to get this tape. Your name's there. So is my wife's name and several other, you know. Okay, so here we go. So remember, there's two names for God, both Old Testament and New Testament. I'm going to take a little time for this because people hardly get this teaching anymore. And the Old Testament name for the family of God. Everyone say, family of God. Okay, so I have a family. My, my last name is Oliphant. Within my immediate family, my adopted children or our mixed family together, we're the Oliphants. Can you say amen? We're one family, but there's more than one member. God is a family, and his family name in the Old Testament is Elohim. Everyone say Elohim. Now, that's a broad term. It means three in one. It means there's more than one in one unit. God, Father, the begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're unified. Then when we receive Jesus, guess what? We become one through Christ. Amen? This is how powerful you are, but we, do, we lose that understanding. So in the Old Testament, everything that was created, the angels, certain angels, cherubim, seraphim, you know, different kinds of spirit creatures, we're all a part of being Elohim, but there have been a hey Elohim. In other words, lower parts of God made into servants. But only three original and only one place in God's heart for his crown creation so he might have companionship on his level. Not an angel. He couldn't do that with an angel. Satan wanted that so bad, that's why he rebelled. He wanted that be that sonship to God. But no, that was left for humanity. Aren't you glad? So when you hear people say, oh, we're not that special of a race. Oh, you really don't know anything. And please, don't try to educate me if you're that dumb. You are the most special race ever created. That's why Satan hates us. Get it down. You cannot befriend the world nor a system because it will destroy you. So these are the original three. Everything's copied after them, and we're made in their likeness, in their image. So let's go to point two. Did you get that? Was that good? And he honors his word. So when God gives his word, guess what? You can trust it. And remind God. Now listen, this is not rude. Lord, I remind you of your word. You said that you would cause my children to be saved. Nothing wrong with that at all. God loves that. Because no one in the earth is speaking the word. They're speaking all the problems. A toast. Point two. We are in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 25. I'm sorry it took so long on that first point, but I wanted to drive some things home. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. Now, who's the one on a firm foundation? He that heareth the word 
and does the word. Hear the word, does the word. So we hear here, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. Why? He's trying to get you to do the word. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, Moses, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, God. Whose voice then, in the Old Testament, shook the earth, but now in the New Testament has promised not saying, yet once I will shake the earth, but even so more the heavens. Verse 27, now this, yet once more, indicates a removal of those things that are being shaken. The reason why you see everything a disarray is because God is painting a picture, light and darkness. See good, see broken. Which one do you want? Which one are you going to partake of? There's going to be a real dividing line. The idea is for a Christian not to focus too longer on the broken world. You may have to be in it, work in it, but you don't have to let it affect you. Your job is to bring Jesus to them. They're not to bring the world to you. And here's another little problem. The reason why Christians have ministries to Jewish people is to bring Jews who know not God to Jesus. And you know what? A lot of them went to try to convert the Jews, and now they become Jewish. They're dancing around singing Jewish songs. They won't even use the name of Jesus. Now, that's a little bit odd. And somebody said to me once, he says, well, you've got to learn your history and learn everything about the Old Testament in order to learn the New. Not. Why? Well, here, Paul the Apostle was the cheapest of all religious Jews. And he saw what a fallacy of trying to keep the law was. And you know what? He became a Christian. And so everybody who wants to convert you to Judaism and get you to wave flags and do the Sabbath and watch the food you eat, that's religion. That's passed away. But you can honor them by saying, hey, that's good for you, buddy. <laughs> I told a guy one time, he teaches us a lot because he can get a great following that way. I told him, he says, you don't need to be teaching Christians how to be Jews. You need to be teaching Christians how to be a, have a better relationship, how to learn to die to themselves, deny themselves, and follow Christ out of here. You don't need to be bringing up the laws and all the beautiful parts of the laws and forgetting the curse that comes along with it. And so I've seen a lot of Christians, and this is true, Love God, be pulled into that, and now their families are destroyed. They can't walk in grace because they're trying to obey the law, so they fall back into the curse. Paul calls it, the one that came out of that, says, if you try to follow the Old Testament only and not follow Christ, then you'll fall from the grace God gave you through his son, and you will spit in God's face. And boy, I avoided that. My pastor was very thorough. <clears throat> and how so? He says, Carrie, there's going to come a time, now this is a long time ago, when people are going to run to anything new and think it's God. And, th and they're going to be pulled away from some of the things that are truly of God and caught up into other things. And he says, one is they want to love the Jewish people so much that they want to just be like them. You know, if you read the Bible, it says, don't be like them. It says, convert them to be like Jesus. Now, I don't know how we can mess that up. But a lot of people hear me say that and they think I'm picking on. No, I'm not. I love everyone. I pray for them every day. Look at the victories they're winning. All right, moving along past that, amen. See that you do not refuse when God is talking to you. Say amen. All right. Yet once more, not only will I shake the earth, but he's shaking the heavens. We see it all around it. That the things that cannot be shaken will remain. Now, didn't you read with me as we opened this lesson? He that heareth my sayings and doeth them, I'll show you to whom he is like. He's like unto a man who dug deep and as a wise man built his house on a rock. 
And when the floods came and the trials of love being on the house, could not shake it. Why? It was founded on the rock. So don't refuse God's instruction to you on a daily basis because that's also the rock. And be sure that you obey him. He tells you to clean up your house, do this, do that, obey him. Go see your neighbor, Billy, or Billy, or whatever, and go, sorry about it, Billy, and go over and witness him. Make sure you obey him. Why? Because that rock builds as you obey God, that rock becomes bigger and larger. Not only does it become a rock, Tina, it becomes a block. And then a city block or two. Your foundation broadens. Hearing and doing and hearing and doing brings stability to every believer. Say amen. And then verse 28 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, came at Pentecost, and God is building that kingdom by his word in our heart, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Why? Because everything from God cannot be fought against. That's why God wants you in his word, not in your head. That's why he wants you acting on the word even if you don't know too much. So that you have protection and you're walking on the rock. You're not swimming in a lake. Come on, some lap. Therefore, we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let us have grace. God, keep receiving that grace by which we may serve God acceptably and with reverence and godly respect, fear. For our God is a consuming what? Fire. Everyone say, I got fire of God in me. But it gets brighter when I feed it the word. So you have to put the word in you. God's fire in there. But then you get in the word, you hear the word, you come to church, hear the word. That's all fuel for the fire. And then the fire starts building and building and building. Then the Holy Spirit gave you tongues and prayer and praise. Now that's the fan. Turn the fan on the fire and now the fire is getting hotter and brighter. What's it doing? It's burning up the chaff and all the worthless stuff in our life. The stuff that makes it look like hypocrites and turning all the pains and the solids, burning them all away. So the more I can get you in the fire of God, the less you you're going to see, the more God you're going to see manifested in your life. Say amen. amen. So don't just have a little fire going on and feed him a trinket or two. Pump the word in yourself for a while. Get some understanding. Ask a lot of questions. Look, at I have a whole lifetime of being with God want to share things with you. There are things I can't share with you because others wouldn't be able to receive it because it's beyond them. So I have to, have to measure everything by the Holy Spirit so everyone gets something out of a sermon. But come ask me specific questions. What about this? What about that? That's what I did to my pastor. In fact, m me, myself and alone, would come so often that he would go, oh, no, he's coming. He said, I actually prayed for you one time, Carrie, that you would just stay away so I could have some sleep. You want to know how I grew so quick and so fast and got promoted so quick? It's going after God, being with God. That's the only way to do it. Can you amen? And to be around people that teach good teaching. And there's plenty out there, but there are, you got to be around someone who's going to teach you more than just pablum. Give you some solid meat to chew on the rest of the week. Say amen. Couple points. We are to be diligent to hear God's word, his voice, why? And receive our instructions, why? Because the devil can't fight against them. When you do what God asks you to do, it's God in you doing it. Two, God's word is his voice. We hear, we obey, we do it. This builds an unshakable foundation and kingdom within us. We're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Thirdly, by receiving the word and doing it, we again get understanding of how the kingdom operates, its principles, so we don't break the principles of God through our daily living. You can't lie and expect God to bless you out of the same mouth. You can't be living a falsehood, not being honest. You know, I remember people coming to me as a counselor, and, and I ask them, I need to know how you really are so I can really give you good advice. 
but they'd always lie to me and tell me who they weren't. So I'd give them advice for that stranger they brought before me in counseling. Come on, laugh with me. Yes. And then you go in, they come back and they say, well, you know, it didn't work for me. I said, well, which one? The stranger you brought me or the real you? Moving right along. Fourthly, we are not to be ignorant concerning how the enemy works and how we need to grow. Can you say amen? All right, let's move to our next point. Don't let our walk slip away. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 2, please. Verse 1 through 4. You will, too, if you get too busy, if God slips away and becomes second. I'm a firm believer that God has to be first in your life daily. So he has the captain. Now listen. I don't know about you, but I've been on a fishing excursion, salmon fishing, maybe halibut fishing, twice. The second time I got so sick, I'll never go again. It's just not my thing. But in the boat, the captain's in charge. Everybody in that boat subject to that captain. That's how it works. You don't have the guy down the belly of the road. So I'm sick. I'm taking the boat in and have the captain and this guy arguing. You know, and that's the way some churches are. There's only one pastor. In this case, Linda and I are one. But who's the captain? Jesus. So I have to really pay attention and really be close to Jesus so I can get the orders for our boat. You guys are a vessel. You're a corporate vessel together as a family and individually as a little dinghy. I got a couple of gigg giggles. Yeah. We could either be a, a big ship together or be a little dinghy. And believe me, this is a joke. There's a lot of Christian little dinghies running around saying, thinking they know everything. They're not subject to a pastor. They're not subject to a church, but they know it all. Do not get into their dinghy. Stay out of their boat. All right, so let's go on. All right, so don't let your walk slip away. Hebrews 2, look at verse 1. I love this, but it's also a letter to the Hebrew Christians who are letting Jesus go away. They're renouncing Jesus, renouncing their religion to save their lives. People were getting killed being either a Jew or Christian. And so they're running for their life. And so here the author is saying, therefore we must give the more earnest to the things that we have heard. In other words, you know this, guys, lest we drift away. And it uses the Greek term like a boat that somehow through the movement of the water breaks away from the dock and the rope gets untied and sort of drifts away little by little by little. If you meet with God every day, that won't happen to you. Pastors get tired of fixing people that know better. It's pretty frustrating at times, but we still do. Can you say amen? Lest we drift away, for if the word spoken, here's that spoken word again, through angels, that's the Old Testament, proved steadfast, and every transgression against it and disobedience received a just reward, they got in big trouble, how shall we escape this planet if we neglect so great a salvation? Jesus first, folks. Jesus first is this way. You have to put Jesus first in your prayer life. First thing every morning, I say it that way so you don't have to worry about it. Two, your worship time, your word time, and your prayer time. It's all part of putting God first. One more thing. Everyone say, what is it? And you can tell a Christian if they got God first because they'll be in church. Going to church is a sort of a semi-command for us not to forsake the going to church as some people have. And now we're learning about not drifting away. Now, if you go to church like we pipe church into your living room, that counts. Can you say amen? But there are people that won't go to church. They stay away from church one reason or another. And then they, when something, now listen, when something breaks down in their heart, guess who they run to? 
the God they forgot. God warns the Israelites, don't be like that. When you enter that promised land that I gave you, you sleep in houses you didn't build. You eat from food that you didn't grow. You went to the supermarket. You have money that you earned, but you seem to have an abundance up. That you forget not the Lord your God who created and bought you. That's Satan's whole job, remember? To get us to slip away. Be caught up in other things. And listen, it, I know what it's like to try a little bit of sin. You know, I got so hurt and I lost my marriage and everything like that. I tried out a little drinking, a little stoning and everything. Guess what? It doesn't satisfy. And if you're stupid enough, you'll go back. No, if you're stupid enough, you'll stay doing it. But I, I thought, this isn't for me. I never made a good drunk. When I drank, can I, can I share my faith with you alone? When I drank, I turned into one of those slobberers. Oh, you're my best friend from heaven, you know. Go, and then after I'm done, can I borrow 20 bucks? You know, I was so, I don't know what you call that. But never really a drunk. Everybody has the wrong definition. I drank. I did because I wanted to escape the world. I couldn't face things. You know, now we have Jesus. Remember last week I told you, you don't have to leave things it will leave you. Once you get on more with God, evil stuff will start leaving you. And suddenly one day I said, yeah, don't want to drink anymore. <laughs> Hello? Just don't want to anymore. And then just remember, when you give up something, God has replaced it. So let him replace another life that we used to crawl and try to escape into that other life. Because Everybody that tries to do that. See, we're not any better than anyone. We just came out from among them. We, we, we decided not to touch the unclean things that would harm us or harm someone else. Can you say amen? We love God too much. Can we say amen? Becky, well, wonderful. All right. I just am having a good time. Are you enjoying this? Okay, so don't let these things slip away. He says, look, in the Old Testament, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken to us by the Lord, the disciples, and was confirmed to us by those that heard the Lord, the disciples, and then point four, or verse four, God also bearing witness both with signs, wonders, and various miracles. Here's what the word does. The more filled with the word, the more your faith is encouraged. The more your faith is encouraged, the more you want to do the word. When you do the word, it's no longer you doing it. It's Jesus coming out of you in the doing. So I can tell you, I remember when I first saw my pastor lay hands on people that were sick and they got healed. First one was a set of crooked teeth. And so the, the parents brought this young lady. Can I share a little bit? Uh, young, young, probably 14, 15. They didn't, couldn't afford her braces. So they came to my pastor. They were visitors. They would only visit once in a while when they needed something. I love this. And they said, would you pray, Brother Sires, and you and Anna, and, and pray over them? And we need Jesus to heal the teeth because we can't afford a de you know, little dental work. And I'm thinking at that and going, what? I'm a young baby Christian, right? And right there, he put his hands right around her mouth, and Anna put her hands right by the flat of her neck where her jawbone hit. And they transferred the Jesus out of them. And right in front of my eyes and about 20 other people looking like this, her teeth moved and altered and straightened beautifully perfect to the point that some people actually fell under the miracle of watching it onto the floor. Now, can you imagine what God's doing with me? He says, son... This is the kind of Christianity believing that I want to expose you to. Now, I didn't get that then. I got it later. Understanding why he allowed me to experience all the things that I experienced. Magnificent. Right after that girl came a man who had a limp. Had one foot an inch and a half shorter than the other. And he had a special shoe 
to add the extension to the shoe. You know, you see them. I don't know if they do that too much anymore. I don't know how they do it. And, and, and he came crying up front. I want Jesus to, to heal my back and legs. And so he took his shoes off. And he reached out his hand. And now Anna, see, there's a conduit between husband and wife or two people in agreement for the person they're touching. Two shall agree on earth as touching. And she would send the anointing in, and he would do the anointing. He, he made him sit down, held out his foot, and right there in front of all these people, his foot just, you could hear his backbone pop, and his foot just grew out and lengthened. And to this day, he walks straight. And I went, wow. Now, this is when I first came to know the Lord. And every time we would go to church, we would see this. So guess what? People kept coming to church. Amen. So I thought, wouldn't it be great if God used me that way? Wouldn't it be great if God used you that way? Well, he wants to. You don't have to be the special special. Can you say amen? Aren't we special? So I got a chance to go up into Buckley, and there was a place called the Odd Fellows Hall. And I was ministering the word of God, and I didn't know anything about the word, but I did know how to share my testimony. And there was this couple that I knew very well, I won't mention their name. They had a son who was just born, and he had terribly crossed eyes. Maybe you heard this testimony. I, I don't want to mention his name, because you probably put two and two together. And so they brought him up weeping. And, and I'm thinking, oh, here's my opportunity to pray for somebody. And they put him in my hands and said, can you ask Jesus to heal our boy's eyes? And I looked at him and their eyes just as claw, cross, just as cute as a kid you ever saw. And I said, Jesus, and this is all I said. I said, Father, I can't do anything, but Jesus, you can do everything. I ask you to straighten his eyes. And I just touched him like that and believed. <laughs> Took my hand away. Now remember, this is my first time. Took my hand away. And you know what I saw? Two beautiful blue straight eyes staring up at me and this child starting to, to laugh and giggle. Now, what do you think that did to my faith? I want you to experience these things as well because you have the same Jesus in you. And see, people don't teach that all things are possible to him that believes. They teach you got to go through a hoop, got to become a deacon, Get you get all this and all that. You know, I seen a person that was inebriated, still loved Jesus, but they were really messed up, staggering around. This kid came down the street by Casey's Capoose and Sumner and hit the, back in the days where they had the light, where you parked and you had the light meters. I mean, that was a long time ago back in Sumner. And this little guy, skateboard guy ran up and hit it and fell down. And on his arm, it looked like his arm was broken. He smashed his face. And this old friend of mine that we had been drinking at Casey's came out and he said, oh, Jesus, you can do something. And he ran right over there. I'm watching this. Before I can get to this kid, puts his hand on The kid sits up, the blood stops, sits up, and then roller skates away. And I'm thinking, here's a man totally inebriated. Now, I'm not justifying that. But I want to show you something, how God can use anybody. He even used the donkey in the Old Testament. Didn't he remember Balaam? Let your life be so tuned in, you don't need somebody that's inebriated or some donkey to talk to you. Say amen. Because why? You have family here. You are blessed. You have God on the inside. You have a pastor, Linda and myself, who will ask your questions, talk to you back when you, 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 you share things. So don't forget, the only thing holding you back is you. It isn't the devil. See, man, don't let your salvation slip away. Church, it's a lot easier to just let yourself go. We don't want to do that. You want to not only follow Jesus, but let Jesus hold on to you in such a way that it's easy to follow him. We know, too, God builds in us his kingdom through understanding his word by doing it, hearing it, hearing it, and doing it. And this is how we become stable. Thirdly, remember, I got the hiccups. The angels of God 
are here in the earth. Now we know that enemies here and his spirits are here, but they're stripped. All they can do is try to lure you or distract you. Have you ever noticed when you're in a serious, uh, a serious conversation with somebody, how many off the wall distractions come out of everyone? Anybody? Phone rings, dogs bark. I mean, kids, one time we had a whole bunch of kids start crying all at once. That's, that's the enemy. He's trying to get everyone not focusing, not focusing. First thing God said to focus on him, slow down. Can you say amen? Why? Because he's moving in the earth, but we don't want to be going so quick we don't see him or to be ignoring ourselves so caught up in ourselves that we don't notice anything else or anyone else. So he says, remember the angels are here to minister to those that do the word. And remember also the believers, they went everywhere and God confirmed their word with signs following. So it's you and God, you bringing God everywhere. And you know what? You get to do it in God, with God, for God, and God in you. You're in a tank, you're in Jesus, you're in the kingdom, you have the name, the word, the blood, the angels, the covenant, you have forgiveness anytime you blow it, you can give it right in the spirit, Father, in Jesus' name. What does the devil have? The simple distractions and frustrations you allow to get you. Your weaknesses. Paul says, though I'm weak, God in me makes me strong. He says, we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, if we pray in tongues, pray in the Spirit, it will take hold with our spirit against all our weaknesses. You want better eyesight? Pray more. You want to have a clearer mind? Pray more. Someone say, oh me. Because it's God in you and that presence of God that heals, restores. All right, last point. Everyone say, the doer of the word. That's you. Say, that's me. James chapter 1, talking about two individuals, the old you, the new you, in verse 21, James chapter 1. Therefore, because of the previous things I've taught, therefore lay aside all filthiness, don't be crude anymore, and all overflow of wickedness, don't be devious or get evenness, and receive with meekness, receptiveness and willing to changeness. The implanted word which is able to save your what? How many know that your mind, your soul is the biggest battle place? You need to soak it in the word so Satan doesn't take you on a journey of poor me. Oh, I never got a hug from the pastor. Poor me. Just a joke. Verse 22, he says, but rather than this, be doers of the word, practicers of what you hear, and not hearers only. Why? Because you'll deceive yourself. The natural man has a different set of instructions than the spiritual man. And if you don't go and you don't see the spiritual man, you'll see the, and focus on your problems. And when you do, you'll forget what kind of man you or woman you were. And now you're steeped with trying to figure your problem out when God says, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and doesn't do it, He's like a man observing himself, not the Lord, not spiritual heavenly things. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I'm my own best friend. For he observes himself, goes away, slips away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Remember, we got born again. If you don't keep in prayer, you don't keep right with God, the maintenance system will break. You've seen those signs with the cat holding on, 
is sitting there holding on to a bar and it's freaked out and it's hold on and it says, just hold in there, baby. Cute, huh? You can't hold on to God. You've got to ask God to hold on to you. Well, I try to hold on. Well, absolutely, too. Hold on to God. But when you get tired, know that he's holding on to you. So when you want to blurt out what the enemy is doing, don't do it so much. Just bring it out, talk about it, and pray about it, and get rid of that. Because once you pray about things, it says in the Bible, say, ask and you shall. Ask and you shall. Have you asked? Do you believe you receive? Then guess what? It's on its way. Don't talk anything else. Start going, it's mine, it's mine, it's fine. It's on its way. I ask for the divine. Come on. You know, amen. Don't get in the way of the message and the reality getting back to you. For he observes himself, goes away, immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Forget not all of his benefits. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's your Bible, by the way, and continues in it, that's the word of God, and as he becomes not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. You practice it every day, practice it, it becomes natural. This one will be blessed in what he does. That's you, Scott. That's me, Carrie. That's you, Linda. Amen. Danny, that's you. Number one, church, we are to receive the word with meekness. Then obey the word by practicing, even if we're clumsy about it. And with the help of the Holy Spirit will help give us understanding. Two, if all we do is just hear the word and not do it, we're called mentally agreeing. We're just agreeing with the word. There's no power in agreement. You have to do the word. The devils agree with the word. Ah, we don't want anything to do with God. You have to agree with the word and then do the word for it to change. Can you say amen? We are to agree with the word of God but it only becomes powerful when you and I practice loving, caring, praying, doing. You know, that's where the real joy comes. How about giving? Isn't that a real joy? Wow, it is the freedom in that. And then fourthly, the devil believes in the word, but he believes that you won't do it, so he's safe. The moment you pick the word up and start doing it, he loses ground. It says, he who flings the word loses ground. He who flings mud loses ground. Oh, never mind. So in Mark chapter 16, listen to this. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, remember, don't refuse the word. He was received up into heaven, sat down in authority at the right hand of God, and they went out everywhere and preached what? The word of God. What does the miracles? The word of God. What does the miracles? God in you. All you need to do is present it. God does the rest. You don't have to convince somebody to get saved. If they're not ready, they won't. But you just lace their heart with the word of God, and God will see to it. It doesn't return to him void. And will remind them on a daily basis, if necessary, of the word that you shared with them. Always share the word in love. And they went out everywhere, preached the gospel, and God confirming the word with signs following. Then in Psalms 107, verse 20, here's the story of the gospel, the rescue plan. And he sent forth his word, that's Jesus, and it healed them and delivered them from their destructions. We have a Savior now. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You see, we're in a wonderful rescue plan. Religion calls it the redemptive salvation plan of man. And that's okay. But actually, it's a divine rescue plan. God, who knew no sin, had to come on 
become a human being so he could take our sin because we can't pay for our own price and liberate all those who believe in God. And then says, if you follow my son, he will lead us out of this prison planet. This most beautiful planet that God made for man because of Adam's sin made it a prison. Satan's in prison here. Satan cannot fly around in the space. He's not out there. That's why I always laugh when these people say, well, these ancient aliens are traveling all these ways and coming. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're coming from an inner dimension. They're called demons and fallen angels. And what you see flying around is a young manifestation of a demonic presence that it can only be there for a short time. They disappear. They come in, they go out. They, um, that's just the devil. He's been doing it all through history. Years ago in the, in the teens, back in the dark ages, he showed up as fairies and, and little leprechauns. Same devil. Don't you be distracted by him. And now we have all this technology and people are just talking all about what he's doing. I think it's some kind of wonderful thing. It is not at all. You focus on Jesus, everyone. Were you blessed this morning? Would you give a round of applause?